Welcome to Deep Learning course at Purdue. Today we will study one of the first uh, um, and most important uh, tasks um, that our machine learning algorithm will have to solve and what you will learn in this, in this course in general. It is the classification of images. We choose this problem because it's, um, it's, um, it recently had a very great success and it proved that one of the most important application of deep learning. Um, it's very straightforward, there's lots of examples and it's easy for us to understand and also to apply. With classification of images, we really refer to supervised classification. In supervised classification, you see an image like this one of a cat. And uh, we want to ask a computer program, what is in this picture? Maybe the, res the correct response uh, in human language, if we think of English, for example, it's there's a cat or just cat. Um, and if we were to look at different uh, images, we notice that all the images are all very different. For example, one of the first tasks where neural network were employed, it was the um, reading of numbers, handwritten characters and, and numbers. And as you can see here, um, there's a great variety in how people write numbers. And there's lots of ambiguity. And this is very similar in the context of images. In this case, what really makes a uh, number two? We see lots of examples here that are quite different from each other and uh, could be somehow confusing. And for a machine, if they are confusing for a human, they could be even more confusing for a machine. And it's even harder to write a program to really distinguish them. What makes the problem a little bit hard? You see, this supervised classification, for example, of, of a cat, this is what the computer sees. It's just an array of number. An image is just a matrix full of numbers. Uh, in general, it's very nice to know that uh, when you take a picture with, uh, with your cell phone camera or with a camera, usually you get three planes, so three matrices, one for each color, R, G, and B. And the value of uh, these numbers are usually from 0 to 255, so they're usually 8 bits per color, although some cameras have more. Um, and they represent uh, the intensity of each channel, red, green, and blue. And when they put together on a screen, they show a picture like uh, this cat, for example. Well, it turns out that for a computer to understand the content of images, it's a very difficult task. But as humans, we do it effortlessly. And how do we do this? Well, it's difficult to know exactly how humans do it, because you would have to really have a full understanding of the human brain, which is not within our reach today. Since the 60s, Several people have attempted to solve this problem, usually by breaking it up into smaller parts in isolation. And maybe that approach has caused several problems. And uh, really, because of the powers of computers, maybe the lack of availability of large sets of images and in a digital form, um, until maybe the beginning of this century, so for 50 years or so, 40 to 50 years, um, the progress was, uh, well, let's say, just not very exciting. So why is this task difficult, the task of uh, understanding the content of an image? And I think this is, this is going to be a challenge for you too. Um, you know, as you go home, maybe today or this weekend, and uh, you explain to your friends or relatives or parents what, did, what are you studying? And you're studying, oh, well, I'm studying how to interpret image. Most of them will say, well, but that's easy because 
they're humans and for humans this task is very is very easy and they don't understand how it could be very hard for a computer but instead this task believe me is ex is a very hard task why because an object like here uh, Colosseum first of all can have lots of different poses you can take the same objects as different views and they all look very different so these matrices of numbers will be very different matrices uh, so how can the computer figure out what is in this matrix right how do we do it there's also different lighting even though you you catch the same pose every time you shoot you take a picture that picture will be different from the previous one it'll be a similar matrix but it'll be different the light will be different it'll be like an added constant there'll be noise uh, there'll be scattering from weather elements you basically never see the same thing in the same way twice in life every time even in your eyes every time you look at your hands or your cell phone you never see it the same way it always changes this makes uh, image recognition extremely difficult there's also different representation you know you and I can recognize the, the Colosseum in all these forms but some of them are just the diagrams. some of them are a diagram of what it used to be some of them are a drawing some of them are actual pictures but for us it's fairly obvious that it is the same the same item well there's different everything really in an image there's different light different scale different pose different presentation different even different objects there are actually different objects but maybe they are of the same categories maybe this is one Colosseum in Rome and another Colosseum in another city basically you never see the same object the same way twice in your life and this makes categorization of images extremely difficult and this is why we study this problem in this class because it's fundamental to understanding how this machine learning algorithm neural networks help you to solve this problem and then many other problems that are related or, or larger scale so let's start with supervised classification of images well, we use a, uh, in our machine learning course and approach, we use a data-driven approach, meaning we use data to train a system, a model, that will be able to tell us what, what's in the image. We don't write a program that says, okay, if you see this pixel and it's red and that pixel is blue, then blah, 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 because there's too many options. We cannot write such a program. Instead, we have to write a statistical program um, a machine learning solution that uh, will extract features from the image and try to figure out what's inside. So what we do is we collect a large data set of images and today we label them. So we take lots, like in this example here, we take lots of pictures of a cat, lots of pictures of a dog, lots of pictures of a mug, lots of pictures of a hat. And we put them in four folders, for example. And then we use machine learning to train an image classifier. And then what we do is we keep some of these images that we saved in a special set that we call the test set. And we evaluate the classifier on this test set. Basically, we show the classifier the images and we see if it's doing well or not. If it's not doing well, it means we did not train the system appropriately long enough or maybe we have the wrong model. If it's doing well enough for our task, then we're done. For example, we may use a data set like a CIFAR 10, which has 10 different classes, airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, and truck. And he has 50,000 training images, so images that we use to train our statistical machine, and 10,000 to test just to see how are we doing. Lastly, I would like to, to ask you, given this, given a bunch of images, training images, what would you do to solve this task today? Don't think neural network or don't think any specific algorithm. Think 
maybe for for today or for a few hours think what would you do how would you solve this problem don't read anything just think yourself how would you solve this problem and then we'll have a discussion in class